Ferrari have had some questionable moments this season when it comes to strategy, but in Hungary, they made one of the worst yet. When it comes to Ferrari, the Italian media are normally an unshakable pillar of support, but after Hungary, Matteo Binotto is being made the villain. Red Bull are embarrassing Ferrari every race, and it's getting awkward in the Ferrari garage. But who is to blame for Ferrari's failure, and will they have a job after the summer break? Let's find out. Looking at the Italian newspaper headlines on Sunday will have given you a good idea of just how bad a weekend Ferrari had. The Italian media treat Ferrari in the same way the British media treat Lewis Hamilton. When things are going wrong, they highlight how the team will improve and look at what they're doing right or come up with excuses for them. When things are going right, they wax lyrical about how they are the best team in the world. So when you look at the headlines and read Disastro Rosso and Disastro Ferrari everywhere, you know things are bad. The media in Italy aren't just calling Ferrari a disaster, they're also saying that Charles Leclerc doesn't deserve this, which couldn't be more true. After their last blunder three races earlier in the British Grand Prix, we gave you an in-depth analysis of what Ferrari did wrong. Today, we will do the same, but first, let's review where their failures have left them in the championship. The first mistake was at Charles Leclerc's home race in Monaco. The Monegasque was on pole for the fifth time in seven races at the small city-state and was ready to take a historic victory that would have made him the first born and bred Monegasque to win at the track. Ferrari made mistakes with his pit stops as the track dried up, which saw him fall from first to fourth at a track that is pretty much impossible to overtake on. The only way he lost that race was through retirement if Ferrari hadn't made pit stop mistakes. The error there cost him and his team 13 points in the championship. Then at Silverstone, he lost another 13 points thanks to some terrible pit stop choices. This time, it was late on in the race and Ferrari tried to cover it up by saying they didn't have time to pit Charles, but if you watched our video on that mistake, you'll know that they had plenty of time. If they had pitted Charles under the safety car at Silverstone, and they should have, he would have won the race but instead finished fourth. That error brought his lost points to 26 this season. At qualifying on Saturday, Ferrari took second and third on the grid behind George Russell, who had put in the lap of a lifetime to take pole position. That evening, our partners on Twitter, Tracing Insights, put out a poll asking their followers how they thought Ferrari would mess up on Sunday. 32.3% of people thought it would be a strategy mistake, and 34.2% said it would be another creative way. What they did was a strategy mistake, but it was definitely in a more creative way than Ferrari have previously ruined a race. So congrats to everyone who guessed right. So how did they manage to ruin another race in Hungary? Well, we can partly look at Red Bull's race to see how wrong Ferrari got it. Verstappen and Sergio Perez drove to the grid on soft tires. They'd planned to fit hards for the start as the foundation of what was going to be a one-stop strategy. But in the cool, damp conditions, even the softs were not coming up to temperature. Both drivers said, no way are the hards going to work. Ferrari's first failure was not getting it set up for the cooler conditions of Saturday and Sunday right, after looking dominant on the much hotter Friday practice. Had Friday's hot weather continued through the weekend, we'd likely have been looking at a dominant Ferrari 1-2 from the front row. In P1 and P2 on Friday, Ferrari topped both sessions by over 0.13 seconds, but when the weather turned over the weekend, they seemed completely clueless on how to deal with it. With all the data available to F1 teams, you would expect Ferrari to understand what conditions they needed to make the most out of the tyres. At the bare minimum, they should know that cooler weather means it's harder to heat up the tyres, but during the race, they seemed to completely forget the basics of tyre use in F1. They also were apparently blind to the rest of the race. Leclerc showed strong pace on his medium tyres early on, as he jumped signs in the pit stops before passing pole sitter George Russell for the race lead on lap 31. Thereafter, however, Leclerc would fall down the order after a second stop for hards, eventually coming home P6 following a third stop to ditch those tyres for a set of softs. While a soft shod signed 2 was caught and passed by Lewis Hamilton for P3 in the final 10 laps to finish P4. Picking through the race on Sunday evening, Bonotto was asked about the decision to put Leclerc onto the hard tyre. The Swiss replying, When we fitted the hard, our simulation was that it could have been a difficult couple of laps of warm-up, slower than the medium for 10 to 11 laps, and then it would have come back and been faster by the end of the stint. And it was a 30-lap stint. Based on our data and our analysis, we knew the hard was not as fast as the medium, but it could have been as fast 11 laps into the stint. 
Yes, it didn't work and we would not have fitted them had we known they would be as bad. Let's have a look at some analysis that Tracing Insights have done to show you just how wrong Matir Binotto and Chief Strategist Inaki Rueda were on the day. Tracing Insights plotted the fuel-adjusted lap times to each tyre and its age. Binotto said that the hard should have been as fast as the mediums after approximately 11 laps, but according to the data from the race, it was a whole second a lap slower than the hard tyre at that point. It wasn't until around lap 30 that it got faster, but they brought him in after 25 laps to change them to softs after making him suffer through half a race with a tyre deficit of around 0.65 seconds of lap time. Despite taking the hard tyres for a long stint, Leclerc actually had one more pit stop than every driver that crossed the line before him. So not only was the choice of hard tyre costing him 0.65 seconds a lap, that last pit stop also lost him 21.5 seconds of time. In summary, the hard tyre cost him approximately 16.25 seconds on track and then 21.5 seconds in the pits getting rid of them late on. So Ferrari's decision cost Leclerc around 37.75 seconds of time in the race. That's enough time for him to finish in first with 21.75 seconds to spare. Obviously, that gap wouldn't have been quite so big in the race, but it really does boggle the mind that Ferrari continue making these decisions and then defending them afterwards. Asked if the Ferrari pit wall had been keeping tabs on the progress of Alpine, whose drivers had also struggled on the hard after fitting them earlier in the race in Leclerc, Binotto said, Yes, we discussed it, and it's not all written in the stars. We are looking at what's going on and what's happening with the other tyres. We took all considerations. We discussed what was best, and that was the choice we made. It certainly was not the right one today. He did go on to say that the car wasn't as fast as they were expecting on the Sunday anyway, with Carlos Sainz only managing to finish in fourth after starting third. But after looking at Leclerc's race pace on the day, we think that without the stint on the hard tyre that completely destroyed his race, he would have been favourite to win. Even Christian Horner thinks he owes Ferrari for giving Max the win. The race swung in Red Bull's favour when Ferrari brought Leclerc into the pits for a second stop in response to Verstappen, said Horner. He didn't expect their rivals to react to Verstappen coming in. It felt that Ferrari were on a very different strategy at that point, he said. They obviously looked to bank track position, but as soon as they pitted Charles and brought out a set of hard tyres, it really felt that a victory was possible. The reaction from elsewhere has been equally scathing of the Ferrari pit team's performance. Ralph Schumacher has said that Matteo Binotto's job is not safe after this most recent round of mistakes, but should the blame actually lie at the feet of their chief strategist, Inaki Rueda? Lee McKenzie, who works for the Channel 4 F1 team, certainly thinks so. In the British Channel's coverage of the race, she said, If there is not a job being advertised for a strategist to start on the 1st of August, there probably should be. It is a question that needs to be asked. This most recent mistake has cost Leclerc and Ferrari another 17 points, bringing their total loss points from strategy mistakes to 43, a truly mind-blowing amount. If Leclerc hadn't had his races ruined by the Ferrari team, he would currently be on 221 points. When you adjust Verstappen's scores, he would be on 248 points, and all of a sudden, there is actually a championship battle. Now though, Max is the runaway leader in the Drivers' Championship, Red Bull are the clear favourites in the Constructors' Championship, and with five races left in the season, it won't be long before we crown them champions of both. Who do you think should get the sack at Ferrari and who should replace them? Could Ferrari hire one of you and make better race decisions? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below, and until next time, drive safe and bye for now.